Well, Masami, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you here on the Social Entrepreneurship and Innovation Podcast. And for folks who may not be familiar, would you mind introducing yourself and, and sharing with us a little bit as to what it is that you do? So, hi, I'm uh, Masami from B1J1. And so uh, B1J1 is a global giving movement where businesses from around the world come together to make a, a positive impact in the world. So um, since you know, 2007, we've worked with thousands of businesses uh, coming from more than 40, probably five countries. And uh, with us, uh, they get to choose to um, contribute and give effectively to hundreds of high impact projects in the world. Um, and uh, together, you know, those small businesses, many of them very tiny businesses, have created more than 200 to 10 million giving impacts to date, in which include things like planting trees or giving access to water and so on. Um, so that's B1J1. And uh, um, I'm Japanese as well, from my name, you might guess, mm -hmm. um, and an entrepreneur for many years. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so I, I guess I'd love to start there. As uh, I mentioned, I was doing my research beforehand. Uh, you've, you've done a, a, a healthy amount of public speaking. You've authored four books at this point. B1G1, from what I understand, was not your first business that you started. You're a mother of two. I, I'm just wondering yes. <laughs> how, uh, uh, how are you, you accomplishing so much? How are you staying so focused, productive, and, and driven? <laughs> Actually, that's funny to hear this like productive and focused and uh, driven part. Yeah, I think I'm <laughs> pretty driven, but productive and focused, sometimes I'm not <laughs> sure. So interestingly, um, I was doing kind of like my own self-reflection and, uh, you know, feedback receiving uh, mm. as a leader uh, in my organization. And then one thing I thought to myself was, uh, I want to become more focused <laughs> and <laughs> productive. So that those are the two things <laughs> I want to improve more of. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about my background. So, um, so I wasn't so like, you know, uh, goal driven or result focused in my own endeavor, but I've been very lucky to be given so many, you know, great opportunities to continue to learn and meet and connect and work with amazing people um, ar from around the world. So when I was um, young, I was a very shy, quiet child. So I would never imagine that one day I would be speaking on a podcast <laughs> <laughs> with somebody from you know, half halfway around the world. So I wouldn't have imagined that and plus I couldn't speak English um, you know when I first left Japan at the age of 20 so um, I wouldn't imagine doing something like this either um, what happened was um, you know one thing I had was a curiosity so I traveled around the world at a young age backpacking mm -hmm. uh, and during that time I learned to connect with people in a very new way mm -hmm. because I was very shy and I wasn't outspoken so I didn't tend to be open but then when I was traveling and being totally vulnerable uh, there was no other option to not to ask for help or mm -hmm. <laughs> you know meet and uh, connect with people and try to learn from them so it was a remarkable experience but at the same time I started to see so many things in the world that didn't make sense to me such as mm -hmm. you know, kids not going to school or people with disability not being supported or living on the street or uh, environmental distractions that we seem to be creating, um, even though that was creating a lot of problems for ourselves. So mm. I wondered why those things were happening. And then eventually, um, years after that, when I became a mom for the first time, uh, and that was like 20 years ago, <laughs> and holding <laughs> this little baby, um, in my arm, uh, that was the first time I thought about all the things I learned and saw, then I thought I wanted to do something. So mm. that's when I started my um, first business and became an entrepreneur. <laughs> and uh, since then, uh, the first business at, at that time was a food business. And then um, from there, uh, I you know, thought that uh, uh, as my business grew, I wanted to uh, give back. You know, one day, this business is 
su very successful and we have lots of profit, but then I wanted to help build a soup kitchen for street kids in India. And so that was the initial motivation. And then I worked really hard and uh, eventually, you know, about five years later, that business was um, growing and we had a, a frozen meal uh, product company um, selling meals to uh, more than 150 stores in Australia. Um, so that was that time I suddenly realized that uh, even though I want, I started my business to give, but I wasn't doing that because I was always too busy. Mm -hmm. You know, I still didn't have enough money. Like we were putting all the money right. back into growing the business. Mm -hmm. So then wondered, um, what if, if I uh, continued this way, then maybe in 10 or 20 years time, I would still be doing the same thing and saying the same thing to myself and, you know, saying I wasn't ready yet. I wouldn't, you know, uh, I wouldn't be able to give. So the idea of B1J1 came to me at that time um, in 2006. Uh, and I thought, what if we just gave one meal for every meal we sold? And then when we started to do that, um, then we realized that that was possible because, you know, giving a meal through uh, experience, the NGO, you know, through the school meal program was only like about 25 cents per meal. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, so that buy one, give one concept transformed everything uh, to me because giving was no longer part of future accomplishment, but it was it became something that was part of what we did every day. And uh, um, about like seven months later, uh, I realized that there were so many other business people who cared about the different issues in the world. And it wasn't, ju it wasn't just me. <laughs> um, so then uh, I decided to sell my company at that time and then moved from Australia to Singapore to start B1J1. And that was 2007. So since then, it's been the journey to really like make things happen um, for uh, all sort of businesses um, that want to give and make a difference. Mm. And, and so then what is it like now, uh, 13 years, I guess, in the B1J1 and the, mm. the really impressive uh, giving statistics there in the community of businesses over 2,500. You said the the over 210 million uh, giving impacts made. What what's it like to to be in that position and to see that that scope of of impact in, in communities that uh, B1G1 has touched? Mm, um, so I think the interesting thing is that I probably like um today feeling not so differently from when we started Interesting. You know, because day one when we didn't have anything we didn't have a cool system or uh, <laughs> so many variety of, you know so many projects or so many businesses working with us or so many impacts to say we've achieved this you know mm -hmm. even at that time i think the sense of connection and inspiration and uh, meaning was there because when I, I i remember when i spoke about the b1j1 for the first time and invited business people in the room to join in this mission mm -hmm. and then that day when we didn't have anything like <laughs> we didn't you know we i couldn't say there's a list of features that you get to access or anything but when i talked about how i felt and what we wanted to work on and invited the people to come together and then the, so many business people in the room said yeah like i i think that's a great mission and uh, it's worth achieving and i'm in mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when kind of like that day too i felt so inspired by the spirit of um, giving and desire of the people to give because giving is not the necessary thing for businesses to do mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the, primary uh, objective of business seems to be uh, that we have to maximize the profit of our company mm -hmm. like so that's what we were taught uh, and that's what business school students were taught to do so um, making money is important but giving the money away that hard-earned money away is not a re requirement except mm -hmm. the tax <laughs> so um, it's inspiring always to see how actually people have this desire to do something meaningful, help others, serve, make a positive impact. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm continuously feel, feeling empowered and inspired 
um, when we get to talk with these people or just to see how that small giving impacted somebody's life you know, somewhere around the world. So I think the 210 million is like sometimes too big to be connecting. Mm. <laughs> sometimes like when we focus too much on that number. Sure. Uh, so we rem remind ourselves, like me and my team, uh, remind ourselves that the 210 million giving impacts, it's not just a big number, um, but it's about the smiles that we help to create. And um, when we set a goal, then we need to remind ourselves of the meaning of that goal rather than just focusing on achieving that goal. Mm. And, and so, and maybe it's, it's uh, a deeper into uh, much of what you mentioned just there, but what, what do you think has made B1G1 such a compelling movement for businesses to be a part of? Like why, why have y'all connected <laughs> with 2,500 businesses uh, and have a community of those folks now? Like what, what about B1G1, the movement, maybe the platform or, or the unique approach mm. uh, to giving has, has really uh, taken off? And so giving is not uh, like a scarcity, you know, the opportunity is to give, there are lots of them. Mm. So even if you are just like walking down the street, not today, but then in a normal time, right. <laughs> then yeah. you might get approached to donate money. Or mm. <laughs> so giving opportunities are everywhere. Um, but when we set out to create this initiative, we had three things in mind that we really wanted to create. Mm. Um, so the first one is impact. We believed that the every giving that our members do should create a tangible impact. So it's not about, you know, ABC company donate to XYZ charity um, or uh, we donate $1,000 and then, or, and then we put the, you know, big check, um, mm -hmm. stand with a big check on stage or, um, but we wanted every giving to have a meaning and purpose and tangible impact. So, uh, you know, things like uh, even building a well, uh, it's a big project. So one company might struggle to come up with the money to you know, complete one well. But when we actually look at the number of people that well benefits or a number of days that well will provide water uh, mm -hmm. without too much maintenance and then do the breakdown, it could become something like, oh, it's cost just one cent to give one day's access to water to somebody mm. and or um, yeah finding out what is the cost of planting one tree in a particular region and so with that every cent and every dollar you know can create a tangible impact with B1G1 so that's kind of one thing that we focus on mm. then also when uh, businesses are giving through us we pass on 100% of what they give to the project and we top up the bank charge as well so that even like this one cent is supposed to you know which is supposed to go to water we go to water <laughs> rather than the bank charge so uh, that's one and then the second thing important thing is actually habit so there, there are lots of ad hoc things that happen in the world, you know, big campaign, ice bucket challenge, or so, mm. um, or natural disaster, and the people come together to help, uh, you know, the victims of a specific natural disaster when there is a lot of media coverage. But then quite often things get forgotten after a while. So we realized that unless we can transform our habit, have it, we cannot transform our world in the long term. So b one is really about embedding giving into business activities. So even mm. like every time I have a great meeting, I give, or every time <laughs> we send an email, we give, or every time, of course, we you know, serve a customer, we could give, but it's mm. not only about the sales. It could be anything and everything that's meaningful in business to achieve. We can embed uh, specific giving. And then bring people together in the uh, activity to actually think about the, the positive impact that they get to create. So that's mm -hmm. B1G1. Um, habit is the second important thing. And then uh, thirdly, what we focus on is connection. Mm -hmm. So we want the giving to be shared and you know, among people and also create a sense of connection. And it's not only... Uh, about that, like you know, it's great to be able to share 
what we are doing and then um, thank our customers or team members. So that's part of the connection. But another part of the connection is that um, because we cannot change or solve all the problems in the world alone, we come together to make a difference together. Mm -hmm. And so businesses coming together in B1G1 as a community is really central, like important thing to us because uh, that's why when we have hundreds of projects, all of the projects can get supported mm -hmm. um, among all these businesses and everybody can choose what they want to do. But collectively, they get to know and feel that their impact goes far beyond than what they could be doing alone. Hmm. So that's connection, the third element. And so every, every day, like when we are working or every time we choose a project to work on, we question ourselves, like, uh, does it contribute you know, towards our mission? And also, does it create impact habit or connection or all impact habit and the connection? So that's hmm. kind of like important thing. Mm. And, and, and so maybe it, it plays on that, and that secret sauce of, of B1, G1 in, in the approach to giving. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to know, what, what do you feel like you've learned about this space of uh, uh, giving in business, philanthropy in business? Uh, what, what, do you, what have you learned and, and feel you understand now that you didn't understand mm -hmm. when starting B1, mm -hmm. G1 13 years ago? Mm. <laughs> well, like the idea was very simple. You know? sure. Imagine what if every time you do something in business, something great happens in the world. Mm. And to make that simple thing happen, uh, yes, there were lots of things I didn't know of, we didn't know of when we started. Mm. Um, so uh, even, you know, just a simple thing like how to list a project. It, it, there are so many things that we learned and also you know, uh, came up and continue to add to the criteria uh, of choosing the right type of organization to uh, helping them really understand how the breakdown works mm. and then work together to do it because um, charities don't necessarily uh, know uh, how to do this kind of project breakdown. Because mm -hmm. uh, many of them are used to just asking for donation, you know, sure. general donation, and say, please donate to us. Here's mm -hmm. a, you know, option uh, one, which is donate hundred dollars. Next one is thousand dollars, or and they have a website to collect money, uh, and then their job is to simply utilize that money to do the good that they do. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, helping the charity organizations to understand this, and then also for us to understand whether uh, you know, uh, this type of project is suitable for B1J1 or not. Um, and then uh, listing those, like that's kind of one part of it. Another part is really to run this as an online platform. Like the fundamental giving part is online. Mm. Even though we have a kind of community where there is much more happening offline <laughs> as well. So the online part, like we have to learn so much about the technology and how to make system work. And because as an organization, we are kind of more spirit driven uh, and the philosophy driven organization. So we, you know, we wouldn't call ourselves a smart, geeky tech company run by uh, the geeks, you know, who knows what they are doing in the technology space. So we have to learn a lot about how to utilize technology to make things easy, simple and easy for businesses to do these things. And then the third part really is like uh, understanding the day-to-day -day challenges, situation of those businesses is because even if they have a good intent to, to give, they are time poor, <laughs> generally time poor. And uh, um, they have so many other priorities. So um, how do we work with them in the best way to help them actually embed the giving in what they're doing? So that's kind of mm -hmm. another piece of uh, learning and challenge uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So uh, I wouldn't say I have completed this learning yet, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but <laughs> there's so much more to learn. Well, I'd be interested to hear more about that specifically as, you know, I imagine there's uh, uh, business leaders listening in to this, this episode here, uh, wondering and, and maybe thinking through the process of, you know, they want to do something to, to give back. But I, I think as you mentioned here and as well, I, I've, I watched another talk of yours 
you know, we tend to think so big first. Uh, I, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what, what is some of that kind of dialogue that you have with, with these businesses that get introduced to B1G1 and are wondering where they should get started. Obviously, the platform itself in y'all's model is a great solution mm -hmm. for it, but I, I'd be curious to have you dive in a bit more to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, to me, like when when any business owner said, "Oh, I'm just a you know running a startup company," mm -hmm. so like uh, when we have this, or you know, when we achieve this, or when we are more su successful, mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to start something like you know giving in B one G one, or um, oh, I we our accounting firm is just a normal accountant firm. Nothing is very special about us, or <laughs> like so. So businesses have uh, you know perception about um, what they do, who they are, and sometimes. I hear that they don't think they are special enough or successful mm. enough or big enough or, uh, and then as a result, they put what they actually want to do kind of aside. And that's not necessarily just about the giving. It could be that, you know, people saying like, oh, when I retire, I would do this because right, right. now I don't have a time. Or So it's so easy to procrastinate or postpone things that actually are quite important to us. Mm just because we feel we are too powerless or too small or too new or too inexperienced or, mm. you know, unspecial or something. <laughs> so, um, but the, because that's exactly the way I felt mm. when I was working in my business. And I remember those days I was working so hard and so uh, committed to survive and you know, grow. Uh, but at the same time, in a day-to-day -day basis, there are many moments where I felt discouraged because I felt like, you know, I wasn't doing anything mm. meaningful or uh, I wasn't uh, making an impact that I wanted to make. Or um, So uh, the fact that I changed the way I thought changed everything. I feel that there is so much value in uh, all sort of business people to go, actually, I care about you know, the education in the world or environment, and I want to do something. I don't have yeah. a lot, but what can I do today? Mm -hmm. And when we think of it, there are lots of things we could actually do uh, on the day-to-day -day basis. And so B1J1 could be one of them that, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that the, even one cent can create an impact or one dollar can do this. And then if like you think like, oh, whenever I have a great, let's say, meeting, um, I, 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 after the meeting, I go and then just plant a tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then to be able to uh, say to the person, thank you for you know, that lovely conversation. Together we get to plant a tree. That's mm. lovely. But the, some people may not want to even talk about their giving. You know, they sure. might just want to do it and then feel like, okay, actually there is that extra meaning. Like every day when I get to have a good meeting, I get to plant a tree too. So I will listen better mm. <laughs> or I will ask more questions so, to make it more meaningful. Um, so I guess like, uh, when uh, you know, anybody feel uh, disempowered um, and then feel like uh, he or she is not ready to do something, then the question is then, okay, let's not worry about doing amazing things or big thing. Mm. And that, uh, let's think about just doing something small. And then if we get to start that from today and can continue this until it becomes a habit, mm. <laughs> then that's when we actually can transform uh, so many things too. Then we, we can move to bigger things later on. <laughs> mm. and, and so then looking ahead uh, for B1G1 in this, this space of uh, uh, business giving, where, where's the focus? Like where, where do y'all, uh, um, where are y'all putting your attention? Is it expanding the community? Is it expanding the depth of, of impact or where are we looking, mm. looking forward? Mm. So like, we have an overall goal to grow our impact to 1 billion giving impacts by year 2025. And then, but that is like a more kind of umbrella goal. And then it's like a byproduct as well, rather than that's actually what we are optimizing to achieve. Right. So uh, what we are 
doing is, first of all, yes, we are going to reach out to many more businesses, you know, over the next few years, and we want to scale this, and we want to get to also the marketplace that we are not reaching right now because we uh, currently serve English English speaking countries mm. uh, primarily because our website is in English and uh, you know propositions in English. Uh, projects are described in English and so on. So there is much work to do to make B121 uh, accessible by any business from anywhere around the world. Mm. And then, so it doesn't uh, stay as uh, businesses from a limited number of countries will give to the project in you know certain countries around right. the world. To actually, we can have businesses in all the countries and we can have a project in in all the countries so that's our aim so we have to grow both um our you know uh, member base but also our reach uh, in terms of projects that we have around the world too so that's kind of part of it but the focus is not necessarily just about growing the community ourselves because focus is about empowering the community to grow themselves <laughs> and um, so that's why like we are now talking um, to everybody in the community saying now we have become a movement so this is a movement that we together drive mm -hmm. and grow um, so empowering leaders in the community is more important than let, let's just recruit more members into b one one because when you know, businesses join us and they realize that they can inspire other businesses that they are connected with. Mm. That's the magic of it. <laughs> so um, we are focused on and moving into the next phase where this is really about growing more business leaders in the giving community so that they will create their community of giving and their connection and their community will grow and inspire more people around the world. And then as a result, we get to have a more projects because, you know, then we get to hear about, uh, you know, more projects in different countries and uh, there's more demand and more giving going. And so uh, the growth should come as a result of that, right. we believe. <laughs> Certainly. I mean, that, that's, that's your way to an exponential curve if one member on average refers another, even if on average one member refers one and a half members or something like that mm. it's that's a, mm. a great way to to grow it in, in building <laughs> it sounds it sounds a bit like a coronavirus <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe that's where my yeah. head is at why i'm just speaking <laughs> that language but um so I'm, I'm i'm wondering then to to achieve such lofty and, and ambitious goals for mm -hmm. b1 g1 um maybe it's it's much different than what your role was uh, back in 2007 but what's your role now as CEO, as leader of this organization to help support and in, empower your team uh, uh, to help achieve these, these lofty ambitions? Where do you feel like your, your role is on the day-to-day, week-to-week right now? Mm. So um, because uh, I came from you know, my own entrepreneurial background, so my tendency is to go like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I'm happy to help there. Sure. Oh, I, okay, let me take care of this. You know, like I want to become, like naturally, I want to be a doer of everything. And I love doing almost everything <laughs> <laughs> in business. Uh, so, uh, so that's kind of my bad habit. That's why earlier on I said, you know, two things I actually want to improve, which is like, uh, right. you know, focus. And, <laughs> and, and so uh, focus is, one important thing I need to learn to establish better and then to really understand uh, where I could contribute the most. And so uh, I already know that if I'm actually um, empowering our team to do things and grow and take charge and have ownership and come up with their own ideas and drive things, it's actually better than me doing it mm. <laughs> so um, I'm in the process of shifting more from the doing mentality to empowering mentality and mm. uh, helping team our team members do amazing things and another thing is you know the same like uh, how do I uh, focus on the type of conversations 
I could have with our members and partners so that they feel they are the one to actually step up and then do things. So mm. um, the, the, this kind of things like I need to do uh, more of. <laughs> but uh, another part of it is I think like, uh, you know, really to um, remind everybody and be grateful because I am really grateful for everybody who is part of this movement and initiative. But when I'm being busy uh, too much or worried about like a particular issue, then I might forget like and lose the sense of gratitude. Um, and so fo being focused on expressing it and reminding everybody that what they are doing matters. Mm -hmm. And that's like one important thing that I think I need to do more of uh, now that the, this community is growing uh, 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 if the becoming big becomes just a focus you know the, the focus of what we are doing right. but then we forget to experience the meaning then you know it loses the real soul of this movement so um, I think uh, you know doing that more and so speaking with you today is one of the important things that I get to do Perfect. <laughs> so lucky, thank you for the additional for opportunity lucky for me um, well Masami I'm, I'm so appreciative that you, you took the time could we hit through a, a few uh, rapid fire questions before we finish sure. up all right well let's let's start with a book do you have a book recommendation something that you always go back to or, or something you've uh, been impacted by recently uh, okay, so one book um, that I'm actually very happy about uh, is a book called Legacy, The Sustainable Development Goals in Action, because mm. this is a book um, that was written by uh, 52 change makers, and many of those uh, people are from our b one one community, mm. but also um, some global leaders, uh, you know, people like Paul Coleman, um, uh, who was the former CEO of Unilever uh, contributed for that book as well. So um, it's an interesting book, uh, full of interesting stories. And so if anybody's looking uh, for something of inspiration, then I highly recommend it. <laughs> Perfect. We'll have it linked up. And then uh, what, what's maybe a, a morning routine or a daily habit that you absolutely have to stick with? Uh, <laughs> so I love running and getting out each day, every morning to run outside is mm. one thing that I would not want to miss. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's something that uh, that's right. gives me inspiration. That's what this interview uh, interrupted <laughs> your, your morning routine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry that it had to happen. Uh, but I guess that's the case when you're in Singapore and I'm in, in Texas in the United States. So, you know. Um, and, and so next one, I, I'm curious, are, are there any particular companies or organizations that you, you felt particularly inspired by who are, who are doing uh, really exceptional work right now that you'd like to give a plug to? Oh, <laughs> that's a difficult one because we have <laughs> so many yeah, businesses um, uh, in B101 that really inspire me. Like, you know, if you, because mm. you, know, you are in America, so I want to name just one company. Um, as an example of sure. uh, our members, so uh, this company is uh, Swim School, uh, based in Miami, mm. and uh, um, they have an amazing leader called Miren, and Miren is really all about empowerment. So mm. she is a leader I really, really admire. Um, and so she uh, brings in team members from... Uh, also disadvantaged the community as well. And she does not have any like uh, judgment, prejudice. She sees magic in every person, you know, mm -hmm. even somebody who doesn't speak English. And then she trained them, nurtured them and create many great leaders. And then as a result, also on the day to day, um, when you step into the same school, you just get that spirit um, there, right there from every single person in the team. Mm. And they also give, you know, every time somebody has a birthday, they give uh, to the project that the person cares about or every swimming lesson create a great impact and then have been doing so um, consistently over the years. And so uh, that's kind of like, uh, how the spirit of giving is really the part that drives their actual giving. And then those businesses doing what they do really inspire 
um, uh, me and then my team and then other businesses. So I wish I could talk about thousands of businesses here, but uh, we don't sure. have a time. <laughs> sure, you literally could. Um, and, and so to, to finish us up, one last question. What, what's maybe one piece of advice or, or guidance that you'd give to the uh, young, ambitious, aspiring change maker or, or social entrepreneur? Mm. All right. Um, I think uh, some people are very clear about their destination and goal and what they want to achieve and then know like how to, to what to do and how to get there. Some people may not feel so clear about where they are going. And so to, for me, the advice is to the people who feel a little bit lost sometimes because um, as Steve Jobs once said that you can only connect the dot looking back. You cannot connect those dots looking forward. So to me, like standing here today, um, I connect so many dots in my life and then go, wow, because of that, we did this. Because of that, I'm here today. And then I feel so grateful. But actually, when I was like floating around as a little tiny dot, I didn't <laughs> know where I was going. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if those problems I faced were really meaningful and important. Uh, so I think the advice is just to know that one day the dots will connect. <laughs> mm, excellent advice to end on. And, and finally, last, last thing, where, or is there anything particular B1G1 that you'd like to plug to direct folks to get involved, to get engaged with the community? Uh, sure. So if uh, you are interested in B1G1 and to find out more, then you can go to the website b1g1.com. So B um, for Bob and number one and G for George and number one.com and then find out more and connect with us. Perfect. All right. We'll have everything linked up in the show notes at growensemble.com. Thank you so much for taking the time, Asami. <laughs> Thank you, Corey, for the opportunity. Great speaking with you. <laughs>